So uh, the question was about marijuana, and I'll tell you that marijuana comes up pretty often uh, when I go on the road because uh, many people now live on, in states where medical marijuana is legal, and a number of folks also live in states where recreational use is legal. And, and I'll tell you that my concern around the marijuana issue is that public policy and practice have gotten far ahead of the science that we actually have. And you know, I'm, I believe that policy ultimately should be driven by science, particularly when it's around medical use uh, of substances. But my concern is that uh, that isn't quite the sequence in which it is, uh, has actually happened. And ultimately, that, that, that has the potential consequence of putting patients at risk. So for example, uh, there are folks who, with the best of intentions, are trying to get marijuana to people with certain medical indications, uh, nausea, pain, uh, you know, and, and other indications. The challenge is that right now, uh, the data is actually, or the data that's positive or promising is actually around components of marijuana, where in some clinical trials, components of marijuana have been found to be useful in treating symptoms. One of these examples is actually a drug called Marinol, which is actually used to stimulate appetite. Uh, a medication that many of us, uh, including myself, have prescribed over the years. But that's very different from taking a purified, studied, uh, understood component of marijuana is very different from smoking marijuana and expecting to get the same medical benefit, where we don't know the full extent of what people are taking in, where we can't assess dose uh, and frequency uh, uh, you know, as readily, and we can't make safe recommendations to people. And so this is my concern, you know, about, about uh, marijuana. And, and the other thing is that we know that marijuana isn't benign, right? So this is a, this is a misconception that I find, particularly among uh, younger generations, is people think marijuana is not addictive, and they also think it doesn't really have any harmful health consequences. Uh, but we know that's actually not true. We know that marijuana is, in fact, addictive, and it's more addictive, in fact, when you begin it and smoke it continuously early in life. Uh, and we also know that marijuana is not benign, but it can have actually effects uh, on the, the brain and on the nervous system. Uh, so those are all things that concern me you know, about marijuana. That's why one of my hopes is that we will start to actually look at the science and make sure that our policymakers understand the science behind marijuana. And if we need to invest more, like on the science side, if we need to do more science so we can understand how to guide policy, then that's what we should do. And in fact, the NIH has over 60 studies uh, that are funded right now uh, on marijuana. They've, the administration has in fact taken steps over the last several years to reduce the barriers to doing research on marijuana so that we can understand uh, more about it and get that data out there. Uh, but my con concern, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that policy has gone way ahead uh, of what we understand scientifically. Uh, and I'm concerned that's ultimately gonna have, have adverse effects on public health. Thank you for taking that on. Uh, at the back, Doug. Hi. Whoa. It's like Doug. <coughs> Hold this far away. 